What's going on everybody? Coop Reisman here with Intero Real Estate and today we're going to be looking at the pros and cons of living in Danville, California. Let's get into it. How's it going everyone? Coop Reisman here with Intero Real Estate and if you're new to my channel, I want to invite you to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification only if you want to stay up to date on every video I post. I post a new video every week highlighting cities throughout the Tri-Valley area, which if you don't know is a six city region that consists of Livermore, Pleasanton, Dublin, San Ramon, Danville, and Alamo. I grew up in this region. I spent a lot of time here. I know it like the back of my hand, and I'm gonna be giving you an inside look at each one of these cities. What are the neighborhoods like? Where can you expect to go shopping? What are the schools like? What are the parks like? And more. So please, if you want to stay notified, hit that subscribe button and let's get right into it. So today we're going to be looking at the pros and cons of living in Danville, California. And I got a lot of pros and a few cons, so I think you're really going to like this one. Now first on my pros list is the amazing public schooling here in Danville. The lowest rated public school in all of Danville is an 8 out of 10, with 7 of the public schools rated a perfect 10 out of 10. Next on my list is downtown. I love downtown, it's my favorite downtown out of all the Tri-Valley cities, and that's because of the small town feel, the extensive outdoor seating and restaurants, being able to watch the cars go by, watch people walk by, I just love the environment. And they do a lot of fun stuff like car shows, festivals, etc. So it's top on my list and one of the main reasons I love Danville so much. Danville is also home to a lot of amazing restaurants. A few that come to mind are uh, Peasant and the Pear, Yo's on Hearts, and Piotti. Uh, Yo's and Peasant are both located in downtown Danville. And Piotti is located just a mile south of downtown Danville. Now straight from the Peasant and the Pear's menu serving classic peasant food. This diverse menu serves classic dishes with a modern flair, along with beautifully composed salads, sandwiches, entrees, and house-made pastries. Piatti, Italian-inspired, seasonally dictated entrees, with an emphasis on local farms, and nothing too expensive for Yo's on Hearts, but that is just an amazing sushi place that I love to go to. Fourth on my list is the Amazing Golf, and unfortunately all three of these country clubs are private, but I have had the privilege to be able to golf at these courses. Uh, so first is Diablo Country Club, Blackhawk Country Club, and Crow Canyon Country Club. Now, I highly recommend if you're going to become a member there, look into it more extensively because the price ranges uh, differ greatly. But if you just make some friends, find some colleagues who live within these areas, then you can enjoy a great game of golf. There's also a ton of other golf courses throughout the Tri-Valley that are public and only a 5 or 10 minute drive, but specific to the community of Danville, these are the three courses that lie within it. Now fifth on my list are the amazing homes. They're gorgeous, they are expensive, we'll get to that in the con section, but you can find a ton of brand new custom homes being developed in Danville. It's a really hot market for investors to be flipping homes and building brand new homes. And it's also a really hot market for homeowners who want to buy a piece of land with a tear down house on it, tear down the old structure and build brand new. So slowly but surely Danville is becoming just a row of brand new homes and specific to the West Danville neighborhood. That is my favorite neighborhood personally. Um, you can find a ton of custom homes being built up there and it really just makes the neighborhood pop. Six on my list, it's towards the bottom, but it is one of the most crucial parts of Danville. It has been ranked the safest community in California for the third year in a row by SafeWise. Now this is huge, the safest community in California. The Tri-Valley region, which consists of the six cities I mentioned at the beginning of the video, is home to three of the top 50 safest cities in California. So. If you're trying to find a nice safe community to bring your family, I can promise you that any of the six cities I mentioned are going to be top on the list for safest in California. Now number seven on my list is for hiking and mountain biking um, or family outings. We have Los Trompas Ridge and we also have Mount Diablo which are both 
amazing places for you to bring the family or go solo to enjoy a nice hike or a bike ride but i have to warn you if you're planning a bike ride to the top of mount diablo make sure you know what you're getting into because you're going to be walking the bike for a little while now that's going to be the end for my pros list in danville i know that there are more but those were the first things that came to mind and when it comes to my mind immediately it's most important to me so i just kept it to those seven next we're going to get into the cons list now number one con on my list is the housing prices now i mentioned in my pros and cons of pleasanton that it was somewhat justifiable based on the proximity to the large tech companies in the south bay and peninsula and that with the high salary income that you receive at those companies it makes more sense to spend this much money on east bay housing prices but Danville is going to be the second most expensive city throughout the Tri-Valley area with a detached average home sale of $1.38 million and a townhouse and condo median average of $800,000. Now, of course, that is just an average, and I have seen two-bedroom condos in Danville go for as low as five fifty dollars to six hundred dollars as well as detached housing go for the 1.1 to 1.2 million range but those are going to be houses that need some work initially unless you're willing to live in a fixer upper for a little while and fix it over time honestly i always say it's worth the high housing prices for me personally because i love california so much and where are you going to find a place with weather like this so you either like it or you don't if you don't like the housing prices Maybe the East Bay isn't the place for you. Number two on my list is traffic, and I can promise you this is going to be a con on every list that I make. It keeps getting worse and worse year after year with the more development that they're putting in the East Bay area. Now, obviously, a lot of people are also moving to the East Bay because of the proximity to the tech companies and the lower housing prices when compared to the housing that's directly surrounding those companies. So be prepared. If you go during prime time traffic, you can easily be an hour and a half, two hours away from the major tech companies in the San Jose, Santa Clara area, which is obviously a con for anybody. And I'm hoping it doesn't get as bad as Los Angeles, but it keeps getting worse every year. So please be prepared. If you're planning a move here, come on down, maybe hang out for a few days, see what the traffic's like and see if it's worth it to you. It's also a possibility that your job, if you do work for one of these tech companies, allows you to work from home two or three days out of the week, which would make a huge difference being able to stay home those couple days, rejuvenate a little bit, and then get ready for the commute again. Number three on my cons list is related to the tracked homes that are being built in Danville. They are expensive. They are close together. There's not much backyard, and they're far off the freeway literally three things that I could live without. Now, that's a con for me because a lot of people go to tract homes because they're historically less expensive um, because the contractors build so many of them in such a short period of time that they kind of just sell them off and aren't looking for the really high-end pricing. But in Danville, they are expensive, they are close together, and they're far from the freeway. I personally don't like being too far from the freeway. I don't like being too close to my neighbor and I like having a bigger backyard. So that's a major con for me if you're considering moving to one of these homes. Now number four on my cons list is the fact that Danville isn't very diverse as a community. Now I have, I have heard from a couple of locals in Danville who say they love the neighborhood. It's very safe. It's very nice. There are nice people, but it's pretty unrealistic for our children to grow up here because they're going to be surrounded by people who have a lot of money. And as some of their friends in school are going to be driving Mercedes Benz and Range Rovers there. Now, I'm telling you this because I just want to be honest in what I hear in the community from some people. Uh, I really love Danville as an area, but I can see where they're coming from as far as that goes. To be honest, there's a lot of really wealthy people in Danville and it can be sort of unrealistic for some kids who might not have as much money as other kids to think that that's how life is. Um, again, this is a preference per certain people. 
you might not care about this, you might really care about this. Um, I don't know that's for you to decide, but if this is something you care about, I would highly recommend looking into other cities throughout the Tri-Valley area, maybe Livermore, Pleasanton, Dublin, St. Ramon. Um, Danville and Alamo are gonna be the two cities where you might think that if it's something you really care about. So please be aware of that. Again, if you have no idea what this city is like, if you want more information, if you'd like a drive-through of the neighborhoods, I would be happy to do that. I love getting calls, emails, and texts from you guys. And if you need any more information or would like to look into it any further, I will hop on a WhatsApp or a Zoom call with you and I'll actually walk through downtown with you. I'll take you through some neighborhoods. I'll tell you what the housing prices are like. I'll show you where the schools are. I'll show you where Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, or Safeway is. So you have an idea of how far am I from all these places? Do I like the neighborhood? Do the houses look nice? Is it well kept? Where are the community pools, etc. So I really want to thank you all for watching this video. And again, if and only if you would like to stay up to date every week I post a new video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification. I want you to have a well-informed and educated decision when you choose the Tri-Valley area for your next move. So thank you guys, and I'll see you soon.